Summary of the Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Sklut. A journalist named Rebecca Sklut talks about learning about an African-American woman named Henrietta Lacks. Lacks died in 1951 from cervical cancer, but her cancerous cells were used to make the first permanent human cell line, called Hella. Rebecca says that Hella made some of the most important scientific finds of the 21st century possible, but we don't know much about the woman who did it. Rebecca then talks about Deborah Lacks, who is Henrietta's daughter and an important part of her search. Rebecca tells the story of Henrietta's first trips to Johns Hopkins Hospital, where doctors at first tell her she's fine but later tell her she has cervical cancer and treat her with radiation. Sklut says that Johns Hopkins was one of the best hospitals in the country, but that it treated African Americans in ways that were very racist. She then goes back through Henrietta's family tree to the town of Clover, Virginia, where she explains how Henrietta met her husband, Day, who was also her cousin. The first child they had was a girl named Elsie. She had mental problems and died in a place called Crownsville. Rebecca talks more about studies and treatments for cervical cancer in the 1950s. Then she talks about cell culture, which was just starting to be used at this time. Doctors like George Guy, who worked at Hopkins, were trying to make a line of human cells that could grow and grow forever, but they were not able to do so. Then, without Henrietta's knowledge, her doctors give Guy a piece of Henrietta's cervical tissue, and her cancer cells start to grow at a very fast rate. Even though her cells are growing, Henrietta keeps getting worse. We jump ahead to 1999, when Rebecca starts trying to get in touch with the Laxes. Professor Roland Patillo, an academic at Morehouse College who knows the Laxes and wants to help her, is careful because he thinks Rebecca is just another white writer who wants to use them. Rebecca starts calling Deborah every day. She also starts calling Lawrence and Sonny, two of her brothers. In 1951, George Guy starts telling people about Hella and sending it to doctors all over the world, but he doesn't make any money from it. Henrietta, on the other hand, gets worse and worse until the doctors say they can't remove her growth. Rebecca goes to Baltimore, where the Laxes live, and meets Courtney Speed, a local woman who is eager to tell Henrietta's story to as many people as possible. The Laxes still won't meet with Sklut, though. Henrietta is in pain in September 1951, and she dies the following month. The doctors at Hopkins try to get Day to agree to an autopsy so they can learn more about her cells. Her family puts her in a grave with no sign. Hella is still doing well, and it has helped scientists make a vaccine against polio and led to the first operation to mass-produce human cells. Scientists start to study viruses, human genetics, drugs, environmental stress, vitamins, and more using the cells. Journalists start to wonder who Henrietta is, and someone writes a story about her using the wrong name, Helen Lane. Without their mother, Henrietta's children are abused by a cousin. Joe, the youngest of Henrietta's children, quickly turns into a juvenile offender. Rebecca keeps looking into Henrietta's family history. She notices that even though her family is descended from white estate owners and black slaves, the white laxes and black laxes don't mix. We learn more about unethical study methods of the time, like those of Chester Southam, who injected Hella and other cancer cells into patients without their knowledge and was later punished by the New York Medical Board of Regents. This case led to a discussion about medical permission. As this war goes on, the Hella virus spreads and ruins hundreds of other cell types. Henrietta's children grow up and start having kids of their own. Joe, on the other hand, is found guilty of murder and gets 15 years in prison. In jail, he changes his name to Zacharia after becoming a Muslim. In the present, Rebecca finally meets Lawrence, Sonny, and Day. They are all angry that other people are making money off of Henrietta's cells while they are poor. Rebecca talks about when the family first heard about Hella and how shocked and confused they were. Hopkins eventually gets in touch with them to study their own genetic information, but he never tells them why. Deborah, who is afraid, thinks they are checking to see if she will die like her mother. Rebecca starts to look into the debate over making money off of other people's tissues, 
which was quickly brought to court but didn't do much to help the laxes. Even though experts keep making progress with Hella in the 1980s, they still have trouble. In the end, the BBC gets in touch with them to make a documentary about Henrietta and her family. The documentary will follow them to a meeting that Patillo has set up in their honor. Cofield, who is a distant cousin, finds out about the family and tries to take advantage of them. At first, he acts like he wants to help them fight Hopkins, but in the end, he sues them for millions of dollars. The lawsuit has been thrown out, but the laxes are still scared. In the present, Deborah finally agrees to talk to Rebecca after a long time. On their first date, Rebecca gives Deborah a picture of Henrietta's chromosomes taken by researcher Christoph Langauer, which is colored and enlarged hundreds of thousands of times. Rebecca tries hard to get Deborah to trust her, but it's not easy. Eventually, Deborah takes Rebecca to meet Zacharia, who is still scary, but he gets less scary when Deborah gives him a picture of Langauer to keep. Rebecca finds out more about Deborah's anxiety, her health problems, and how badly she wants to know what happened to her mother and sister. They finally go to Langauer's lab with Zacharia, where Henrietta's kids see their mother's live cells. Langauer says that he's sorry about how the medical community treated Henrietta, and Zacharia thanks him. Deborah calls it a miracle. Deborah and Rebecca go to Crownsville in the end to find out more about Elsie. They find her papers and even a picture, but they also find out that she was in a lot of pain before she died. That night, Deborah finally gives Rebecca permission to read Henrietta's medical records. However, Deborah becomes very worried and even gets hives. On the way home, they stop at the home of Gary Lax, who is a cousin of the Lax family. As Deborah cries, he asks God to take Hella off of Deborah's shoulders and give it to Henrietta. Deborah goes to the hospital the next day and finds out that she almost had a stroke. Deborah does have a stroke in the end, but her health problem eases tension in the family. A few months later, Rebecca goes to visit them to see one of the Lax grandchildren get blessed. While she's there, Deborah's husband, the priest, asks Rebecca to tell the story of Henrietta to the churchgoers, which she does. After a few more months, Rebecca is done with her work. After trying to get in touch with Deborah several times, she finds out that Deborah died of a heart attack. But when she died, many of her grandkids were finishing high school or even going to college. Rebecca thinks that Deborah was happy when she died, and she remembers that she was excited to see Elsie and Henrietta again in heaven. About the author Rebecca was born in the Illinois town of Springfield. Rebecca started out as a successful writer for both science and general publications. While she was still in high school, she became interested in the story of Henrietta Lacks and started looking into it seriously in 2000. The book took 10 years to write, but it was a bestseller and was praised by critics. Now, according to her website, Sklut is writing another book about people, animals, science, and ethics. She lives in Chicago and continues to fight for patients' rights and privacy. In 2015, she wrote an opinion piece called Your Cells. She wrote their research. Your Permission, in which she talked about tissue donation and privacy, using Henrietta Lacks as a key example. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.